Mm -hmm. All right, so in talking about vertically oriented circles, I always like to talk about it in terms of a swinging guy that I've heard of okay. called Tarzan. So Tarzan swings in a complete circle. I mean, suspend your disbelief, okay? But he's such a swinger, he can do a complete circle all the way around, you know, like take a, take a run at it, go woo -hoo -hoo -hoo, all the way around the branch, like and he keeps on going. So here's Tarzan as a box. Here's the center. I guess that's where the branch would be, and then the, the vine would wrap all the way around in a circle. Um, and so we're going to call this position one, and we're going to call this position two. And I want to throw out a little bit of information about this. Uh, I'm going to make a simplification here, and I'll explain it in a minute. Um, but it's going to make our lives slightly easier, but it's also because we haven't gotten to the conservation of energy portion of the course yet. The assumption that I'm going to make is that the speed at the top and the bottom is the same. I know it can't be because you'll say, conservation of mechanical energy, Mr. Killens. That's ridiculous. The speed can't be the same at the top and the bottom unless it's a, a system with some sort of force driving it. Just suspend your disbelief, because it, it doesn't impact our conversation too much, okay? So I'm going to say that the speed at both the top and the bottom happens to be 5.00 meters per second. Recognizing that next unit, when we're talking about conservation of energy, you'll say, ah, oh, okay, I could figure out what the speed at the top is and what the bottom is, as long as I know one of the speeds to start with and, and energy has been conserved. But we're going to forget about that just for a second. Okay? We're also going to say that the radius of curvature, which in this case is just the length of the rope, is 1.20 meters. And we're going to give Tarzan a mass. We're going to make him be 100.0 kilos. About 220 pounds. So a, a good size for a muscly man. 220. 220. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I want to remind you, before we get started with this, I want to remind you that FC is equal to F net circular. Okay? I, I got to drive that home. Now, I want to I phrase the question this time before we actually start writing things out. I want us to find the tension... in the rope. Well, I guess it's a vine, but find the tension in the, in the rope. Yep. What about the mass of the rope? The mass of the rope? Ah, good. We're going to assume the, ma the mass to be uh, negligible. Mm -hmm. And no drag. Okay. <laughs> so in an atmosphere-free environment where ropes weigh nothing, uh, my dreams come true. All right. Uh, so before I, I actually start anything here, it's always good, if I have enough information, it's always good advice to find FC, if I have enough information. I happen to have the mass, the speed, and the radius. Uh, if I had had the period, I would have used the period. If I'd had the frequency, I would have used the frequency. Uh, but I, I have the speed, so I'm going to go this way. So 100 kilograms times 5.00 meters per second. Don't forget you have to square it. That's really important. 5 squared divided by 1.20 meters. And somebody who's quick on the draw with the calculator. 2,083. 2,083. You got a decimal place for me? 0.3 repeated. Beautiful. 2,083.3 repeated newtons. So we're going to probably make use of that in a little bit. Another thing that we could calculate before we go much further, which could be useful, or, well, I'll let you in on a secret, it will be useful, is the force due to gravity. So if, if somebody's pulling down on a rope, probably their weight is going to have some importance here. So 100 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared, you probably don't even need a calculator for that. What is it? Oh, good. 981 newtons. And so at this point, I think it would probably be a good idea to draw a free body diagram. And I labeled them as position one and position two, so I always believe in beginning at the beginning. Uh, so I'm going to start with free body diagram one. And free body diagram one, if I start drawing on my forces, well, let me think it through up here first. Up at the top, I know that force due to gravity is down. Down at the bottom, I also know that force due to gravity is down. What direction is the tension force at the top? Yeah? Still not. No? Oh, it's down. It's pulling you down towards the center. Right. Okay. It's okay. At the bottom, what direction is tension? Up, towards the center. Yeah. Okay. Now, at the top, what direction is the 
centripetal force. Now this isn't being drawn on a free body diagram, I just want to think it out. At the top, what direction is the centripetal force? Down. Yeah. And at the bottom, what direction is the centripetal force? Up. Ah, okay. So I just wanted to get that out of the way so that I could think it through more clearly in a few minutes. I want to think about what direction all these vectors are in before I even draw the free body diagram. I also noticed that it uh, looks like there's an awful lot of vectors pointing down. Maybe one more vector pointing down than up, or two more vectors pointing down than up. Uh, so I think I'm going to make down be positive, just because. It might make some of the math easier. And now I want to go back to my free body diagram. So I know that for the first situation, I've got FG going down. I've got, oh shucks, that's not right. I've got FT going down and nothing going up. And I said before that centripetal force is really F net circular. So I'm going to set this free body diagram equal to FC. And now I can start making a, an equation for myself. I can say FC is equal to FT plus FG. And I've already calculated the values, so I can just sub them in at this point. Um, maybe I'll get FT by itself, rearranging. FT is equal to FC minus FG. Now maybe I'll sub in my values. Uh, the centripetal force was, we said, downwards and equal to 2083.3 repeated. Minus FG, and FG was 981 newtons, and FG was down, and we said down was positive. So minus positive 981 newtons. And you should get about 1102.3 repeated newtons. Did anybody get that? Yeah. Okay, beautiful. Now I'm going to turn it into scientific notation just because we really should round this. And we'll put it at 1.10 times 10 to the power of 3 newtons. The other question was what the tension would be at the bottom, because it just says find the tension in the row. And we really should find the, the tension at both positions. So at the bottom, position two, draw my FBD. Force due to gravity was down. We claimed that tension force was up. And we're going to set it equal to the centripetal force, which is really the net force for all circular scenarios. It's not really an applied force, it's the net force. We can't put it on the FBD. And if we set up our equation, we can say FC is equal to FT plus FG. And isolating for the tension force, which we're looking for, we get FC minus FG. And again, we sub in our values. And I think I might run out of space here, so I'm going to sort of box this off and try a new color so it's a little bit less confusing on my page anyway. Um, FT is equal to FC was. 2000 or yeah, 2083.3 newtons. Fg is downwards, and that's and down is positive, so minus 981 newtons. And somebody's going to say, Mr. Killens, that's the same answer. What did I do wrong? Something's wrong with this picture. What didn't I consider? Yeah. The sign of what? Not, not FT. FC. FC, the centripetal force. Let's go back to the picture. I just put in centripetal force as 2083 because I had 2083 written in my numbers here. But you're right, I didn't consider one of the directions. At the bottom, centripetal force is upward. So I have to insert the centripetal force with the proper sign when I do my calculations. It happens to be downwards at the top and it happens to be upwards when I'm at the bottom. So there really should be a negative sign here in front of this 2083. Now if we do the calculation, you'll get a different answer for the, for the tension at the top versus the tension at the bottom. And what do you get? Negative 3064.3. Negative 3064.3 newtons. All right, and we could round it off to significant digits. I'm, I'm not going to bother. Um, what I want to point out here is, look at the magnitudes. And I want to see if this makes sense. Does it make sense to you that the tension force would be less when you're at the top of the swing than at the bottom of the swing? Yeah. I mean, if, if it makes sense, there's a good chance that you've done something right. If it doesn't make sense, then either you don't understand it or you've done something wrong, okay? Uh, but I, I think this definitely makes sense.
just based on when I've taken buckets of water, gone to the beach and had a great time in the sun with the sand, I know that when I swing the bucket around, it always feels heavier at the bottom. Are you picking up what I'm saying here? When you take a bucket of sand or a bucket of water and you swing it in a vertical circle like the kids do, it always feels heavier when it's at the bottom. Now we've got the math to prove it. Don't go prove it to a kid at the beach, but it's true and we've experienced it. Not that seeing is always believing, but in this case it is.